my name is Megan Ross and I'm studying a Bachelor of Psychology at Monash University. I was on the VC Honor Roll for Psychology and today we're going to be going through some research methods, specifically methods of sampling. So first we're going to start off by talking about what is the difference between population sampling and allocation, as students can often get these three terms confused. Then we're going to go through the different methods of sampling, so random sampling, stratified sampling and convenience sampling. So first let's talk about the population. So the population is the group of people from which the sample is collected and to whom the researcher intends to generalize the results to. So the sample is the subset of the larger group ring studied, so it is a subset of the population. Now a representative sample means the sample is approximately the same as the population in every participant variable. So this would be representative of age, representative of gender, all those kinds of things. It has to be in the same proportion as it is in the population. Next, let's talk about allocation. So this is splitting the sample up into smaller groups that may experience different conditions. So this would mean, so we have our big population group, we've taken a sample from the population, and now we're splitting the sample into different groups. So one group will experience one condition and the other group will experience a different one. So first let's go through random sampling. So every member of the population has an equal chance of being chosen. Now this would be, for example, putting all the names in a hat and choosing three or having a random number generator. So this works when working with bigger numbers. So you assign everyone from our number, say one to a thousand, and then choose the numbers. So it may generate a hundred numbers. So if number 43 was chosen, you go down your list and you take person 43. Now let's go through some pros and cons. This method is good because it gets us a rep. It is likely to be a representative sample. However, there is no guarantee. It may not be a representative, but there is a good chance. And if we do end up with a representative sample, we are able to be able to generalize the results. However, it is hard to have a detailed list of everyone in the population. If we want to generalize to females, for example, we can't have a list of every female in the world or every female in Australia. It just doesn't happen. It is also very time consuming and costly. Next, we have stratified sample. So first we divide the population into subgroups, also known as strata, and then select the sample from these strata in the same portion they occur in the population. So for example, we could split the population into boys and girls and then take the proportion of each which occurs in the population. Now you can split these up into many groups, so split them up into boys and girls, split them up into the different ages, and then take the proportion of each. So the pros is it is a highly representative sample of the population and the research are also able to compare different groups within the population. So they can compare the results of boys or versus girls, older versus younger, because the um, groups are already formed from the strata. The cons is, much like the previous one, is we need a list of the population and their characteristics. We may not have the details of everyone in the population. So if we wanted to study uni students, it is pretty hard to get a complete list and there is also some privacy rules involved with that. But yeah, it is also time consuming and costly. Next, we're going to go through what convenient sampling. So this is also called opportunity sample. So here we really take anyone who is available. So for example, we may drop our books on the street and anyone who helps us um, is a part of our experiment. So that's basically just anyone who is there at the time. Now this will produce a bias sample which means that everyone in the population does not have an equal chance. So back to our street experiment, not everyone has an equal chance because we are just taking whoever is there on the date. Now, the real good thing about this is it is cheap and easy. However, we will not really end up with a representative sample of the population and it will often be biased. And this limits our ability to generalize the results to the wider population.